Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from ExitAutomation.com and welcome to another video from our Execute Automation. And today in this video, we'll be talking about how we can create clean test data every single time with test containers. So this is going to be one of the most interesting topic and you will be encountering this kind of issue many time. Just consider this as an example of an application. You can see that every single time while you test an application, it can be a monolith application or a microservice application, but still the underlying architecture to access the data is going to remain pretty much exactly the same way. You're going to have a web UI, you're going to have an API, and then you're going to have a database under hood. And you will be accessing the data from the API or from a microservices, doesn't matter, but you will be accessing the database all the time. While you run the integration test, unit test, or your UI test, you will always be encountering issue with test data cleanup, which is the most imminent problem with our automation testing. So how do we resolve this problem? Well, there are many ways that we can resolve the problem. One is by cleaning up the data, or you can run the application in memory that we have already discussed in our YouTube channel before. And you can also run the test by taking a snapshot of your database and then run the test and revert the snapshot of the database after the test execution is fully done. So you can do these many options over there. But there is even more better way of doing it, which is nothing but you can create an ephemeral database which can run in a Docker container and then you can always remove database container after the test execution is complete, which is a very, very easiest way that you can do. But the most important and hard part is how that you can run the database in a container. Because if you're going to be running the application database on a container, then you need to ensure that the database can be managed or the containers which is running the database can be managed by your test script, which is going to be very, very hard. And not to avoid this problem, there is a very, very interesting option available, which is nothing but test containers. So test container is a very popular library used in software testing that provides a lightweight disposable instance of common databases or Selenium web browser or anything else that can run in a Docker container. It is particularly useful for integration testing where interaction between the different services or component need to be validated. And that is the power of the test containers itself. And this is very, very interesting because this way you can ensure that your test data is always clean by running the database in an ephemeral database running on a container. So how can we really achieve this entire thing in .NET? Well, you just have to write this code. It's very, very straightforward. As you can see, I'm going to be using an MS SQL Builder class, and then I'm using a with image where I'm going to specify the image of the SQL Server. And then I'm going to specify the host name, the port bindings, and the password. And if I just do a build, because this is a builder pattern code, and then a SQL Server is going to be up and running for you in a Docker container with these specification, as you can see over here, which is very, very interesting. I will quickly show you test containers if you have not really heard about. So this is the test container, which is part of the Docker at the moment, because you can also see that the atomic jar is now part of Docker. So test container is also acquired by Docker right now. So this is very, very big company at the moment. So you can see that they have got quite a lot of different operations that you can do with. You can also see that there is something called as a desktop, which is a new test container desktop, which has been launched, which is currently running in my machine over here, as you can see. And you can also run them in the cloud if you wanted to. I am not going to go deep into that yet. If you really wanted to see more videos, please put your comments below in this video. I can add those details in the test container cloud as well and how you can run them in the cloud and also how you manage them in the test container desktop. But for now, I'm just going to be focusing just on the clean data. And you will also notice there is something called as modules in the test containers website where it's going to show you different languages it supports like .NET, Go, Java, and Node.js. And if you see that for the .NET, there are many different modules which has already been built for you. So you can use the power of these modules to control the database or the test that you're running. For example, Selenium, as you can see over here, it is also supported within the .NET world, which you can use with the test container to spin up the browsers. And you can also see there is something called a SQL Server, which you can use it as well. And there is this Kafka, MariaDB, and even more database support is available over here. And then there is also quite a lot of supports available for the Go language, as you can see, and for the Java, if I'm not wrong. 
uh, quite a lot and also for the Node.js. So you can use any of these modules and you can also use custom module. Doesn't matter that you can just specifically use these modules. You can also create your own images and you can specify them all together. I've already covered how these can be executed in a separate video, like how you can spin up your own custom Docker grid container using test container and also how you can build everything from complete ground up in my other videos as well. So please go ahead and watch there. It has got entire information over there. Well, as I said, I'm gonna show you how we can use test container to create and spin up and SQL Server database and run that clean test every single time. So for doing that, I'm gonna to come to my REST Sharp code, which is the REST Sharp integration test code that we have already been talking in my other video series where I have talked about how you can spin up a REST Sharp code in the integration test using the in-memory application with the web application factory and how you can run the test against that. That's how we have already talked about it over here in the integration test. But now I'm gonna be including one more class over here. It doesn't matter that if you have not followed the other series, but I recommend you to go through that other series so that you can get some idea of how you can run an application in memory using web application factory and stuff. So now I'm just gonna say uh, using uh, test containers, something like that. And I'm going to be writing the code over here. Basically the idea is very, very straightforward. I'm going to be spinning up an API, which is this GraphQL product API application in memory. And then I'm going to connect the database using the test container. Because as you can see, this application is built using .NET and it is also running the application on a SQL Server database. And using this operation, I'm going to see how we can spin up the entire application within my in-memory application. Before that, I'll also quickly show you how this application is going to look like while I run the application using this Rider IDE. If I just try to click the run button over here, it is going to open the application for me as you can see over here. It has got the authorization and login operation, which is pretty much exactly like I have discussed in my other series of this particular application over here. So if I just go to the unit test one, you can see that the username is going to be KK and the password is going to be 123456. So I can just try to put KK over here and then I can put the 123456 and then if I hit execute, it is going to give me a token and I can use this token to authorize my application. So I can just go to authorize, put a B error and put the token over here. And now if I try to perform any operation, for instance, if I try to get the product by ID and if I execute, you should see that there is going to be a product coming up for me over here. So this is how the application actually works. And note that this entire application is actually running in the database container, which is over here in my Docker container, as you can see over here. So this is the SQL server just running with a database pointing to. And that's what is happening behind the scene for me over here. And now we are going to see how we can run this application's database container in the test container instead of us running from the actual database server from the application. So if I just remove this particular database container, you can see that our application is not going to run. It's going to just throw us an error over here. But now we are going to see how we can make use of the test container to actually perform the operation for us. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to the dependencies of the integration test over here. I'm going to add the manage NuGet package and then I'm going to install the test containers.sql or maybe just hit test container and you will notice that there are going to be a bunch of different container operations going to come up for me over here. And one of them is going to be the SQL server, the MS SQL that I'm looking for. So I can go ahead and install this particular library within my project and now I can start writing the code over here and see how things can be achieved. So in order to do that, I'm gonna write a series of methods over here. The first method which I'm gonna write is gonna be a private async of task of spin and initialize a database. So that is what I'm gonna say, initialize test containers. And I'm gonna say var ms SQL container. And I'm gonna say that new of the ms SQL builder over here. And this MS SQL builder is actually coming from the test containers as you can see over here. And then I can use the builder pattern to perform the operation. For instance, I need to pass the with password, with entry points, with host names and stuff. Just note that 
Our database server is being connected using the connection string within my application, which is going to be this one. So the server is localhost and the database is going to be product DB and the username is SA and the password is this and the other details are sitting over here. And I'm going to set exactly the same kind of thing to connect to my database as well. So what I'm going to essentially tell within my test is that I'm going to say with an image, this is very important because I need to tell test container that I need to use this SQL server image to perform the operation. And the SQL server is nothing but the image is going to be any one of the image as you can see over here. I'm actually using this SQL server image, which is this one. So I can give this name to perform the operation that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to say with image of MCR dot microsoft.com slash SQL server, which is this one. And this is the image which I'm trying to use. And I'm going to give a name for this SQL server if I wanted to. So I can give a name uh, like a host name as a local host because that is what my actual connection string says. And then I can also give the port binding over here because you know that every single time while there is going to be a port being exposed to the host from the container, we have to specify that as well. So the host port is going to be 1433 uh, for the SQL server and the container port is going to be 1433 as well. So that's something we need to specify. And then we need to pass the password to connect to the SQL server. So you know that the password which is used within the connection string is going to be this one, which I'm going to give the exact same thing over here within my test as well, just to align. You can bring up all these things from the configuration file if you wanted to, but just to keep things simple, I'm actually going to just use this as it is from the application over here. So I have now did the entire build over here. And finally, I'm going to start the container using the start async method of the test container. That's all. That's all I have to do uh, to spin up the SQL Server container. So that is done. One of the major part of this part is done. And then the rest of the code is going to be very, very straightforward. All you have to do it is I need to run the application in memory and then I need to run the test against it as it is. As I told you, I have already covered in my other series to talk about how I can run my application in the in memory with the integration test, something like this, and how I can perform the entire operation. I have already covered that, so please go ahead and watch there. I'm not really going to talk about the exact same thing again because the context is not about how you run the application in memory. So I'm just going to copy this entire code, something like this, or maybe the entire test from here, something like this, and I'm going to paste it over here. And we also need a instance for the web application factory and all those stuff. And let me create a constructor. Uh, which is something I require. So I'm going to copy that as well, paste it over here. And let's use the constructor name aligning with a class name. The test, I can walk you through one more time. So the test is basically going to run this particular GraphQL product API app in memory using Web Application Factory. It is going to spin up the application using the default client. And then we're going to use the REST client where I'm going to pass the client straight away. Uh, and I'm going to be performing a login operation because you know that every single time before we perform any operation, we also need to authenticate using the bearer token. So that's the reason why we are getting the authentication over here done. And then finally, we're going to perform a get product by ID of one or two, whatever, which is going to give me the name as you are looking for. So that's exactly what I did in the UI in the Swagger documentation before, which is over here. And that's exactly what we are trying to do it from the test as well. But just that the change in here is that we are going to be running the application in memory and we are going to connect the database which is running in the SQL server. So what I'm going to do is let me first spin up the application's database, which we have written over here, the spin and initialize the database. So let me go and put that over here. That's all. And let's use the await keyword because this is an async method. Uh, that's all. So hopefully it is going to spin up the database for me and then it's going to run the test and make sure that the database containers is going to, this one is going to be deleted. So there is no container up and running. 
And let's try to run the test and see if that really works. So I'm going to hit run. So you can see that the test container should be up and running right now. Do you see that there is a test container which is running in the Docker desktop over here? And this is basically going to be running a SQL Server instance for me behind the scene. And you can also see the exact same thing coming for me uh, in the test container desktop over here. So it's all just running up. And you can see that the test has got successfully completed and there is going to be a result coming up for me over here. So if you don't believe me, if I try to command this particular line of code over here, spin and initialize this container, and now if I try to run the unit test over here, you will notice that the test is just going to fail to see that there is no database up and running. So you can see that there is no container up and running at the moment. And you will notice that the test is keep on running over here and it couldn't able to connect to the database and there is a network related instance specific error occurred while establishing a connection to the SQL server error is coming up. And this is happening because we don't have any container up and running to perform that operation for us over here. And this is happening because of this guy, because we have commented this line of code. So if I just uncomment this line of code and if I execute the test one more time, you should see that there is going to be a container spinned up for me over here, which is a SQL server. Uh, running behind the scene for me and the test has got passed and you also see the results coming up So these are all magically happening for us over here with the test container and mostly note that Every time while the test execution is complete the container is also gone from here That is the definition of test container. So it's going to be creating a disposable container for you Every single time while the test execution starts and once the test execution completes it also removes the container from you from your machine and it is going to keep things more clearer for you. So let me try to run it one more time to show you the life cycle of how the test execution happens. So every single time I run the test, it's going to spin up a test container. It's also going to run a SQL Server container for you behind the scene. And after some time, you'll also notice that magically, this container is going to stop executing because the test execution is complete and it is going to remove that container for you from your Docker container automatically. So test container is going to do everything for you. So this is how we can always ensure that we run a clean state of test every single time. Because even if you create multiple data on that database right now, because we're just doing a get operation at the moment, but if you're going to be doing post operation or put operation, or if you change the data in the database, it doesn't matter because every single time, you're going to have a clean state of database because test container is going to take care of that for you. Hope you got the idea. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the video, please hit the like button. But until then, catch you in the next one.